Hello and welcome to the Basketball Show. I'm Nathan Strempel. It's great to have you joining us once again this week. Lots happening in the world of basketball. Big thank you to our friends at Unibet. Alcatel, uh, Daily Telegraph, and all their sister partners and our friends right here at the throwbackstore.com.au. And as always, I'm joined by four-time Olympian Shane, the Hammer Heel, ready for the hammer. You're hammering the breakers this week in a breakers jersey. No, they will show up uh, a little bit later in the starting five, but they won't get hammered early. They probably should. But they won't. Okay, well, nice to know. Uh, speaking of hammering, I'm not getting hammered or poked this week because we're recording on Monday night. So New Zealand and Cairns playing as we speak. So two pokes on the line next week. So Come on, the Kiwis. I'll get you on both cheeks. It'll be good. So we move into under the hammer. And who is it this week? It's not New Zealand. Who's getting hammered? Well, I think it's pretty obvious, isn't it? It has to be the Sydney Kings. They have to be under the hammer. We, like, we wouldn't be doing our jobs if we weren't asking the right questions. And the question for me... Did the Kings peak too early? Can they fight back? They were the best defensive team for the entire year. We know what sort of roster they've got. Unbelievable Mm. roster. But to lose their last three out of four games against teams in the bottom four, and last week against the Adelaide 36ers, who were fantastic, mind you. They were unbelievable. Very good Thursday against Perth as well. Yeah, but to give up 119 points on your home floor in such a critical game to try and maintain top spot. Uh, The rebound count was a factor. Well, the rebound count, 43 to 18. 18 is the lowest rebound count that a Sydney Kings team's ever had in 896 games. Games. The, the Sydney, history of the franchise. The, the Sydney Kings shot 54%, 41% from the three-point line, and they lost by 20. They've got five American-born players. So the, the thing for me is that I've got concerns with is uh, how they are when things aren't going right. So you look at their body language and the way they communicate, and they sort of just dismantle. They go different directions. Normally the good teams, and they can still do it, They can still win the championship. They've got the talent to be able to do it. But they need to look at themselves in the mirror right now and be able to bring things together because when things get tough, they need to be able to look each other in the eye and bring each other into the huddles and say, come on, let's do this thing. Do you hold hands? That's what Drew does. (laughs) But they need to do it. They need to tough it out. And at the moment, I'm not seeing it. I said they're capable, but they really need to prove themselves. Sorry to hold your hand as you're in the middle of hammering. You've given them plenty of love when they're playing well, but this week it's the Sydney Kings under the hammer. Well, you've just hammered the top team and no one's getting poked tonight. It's a little bit of a different show. Tell me then who gets the stroke. The stroke goes to the Adelaide 36ers. It has to. They were two massive games Hmm. for the 36ers with their backs to the wall. But they were the least likely team to be able to make the top four before the weekend. And it's still going to be tough. I reckon Cairns probably haven't covered on that. Of the top five that have any reasonable chance, okay? True, so true, true. Detail. Um, but their first win against the Perth Wildcats, 97-84, great win at home. They had to get that one done. The one that they've had great success against the Sydney Kings over the last couple of years was always going to be the toughest one, you know, being able to back up. But to be able to get 119 points uh, was incredible. They had nine players that scored over eight points. People just came in off the bench, and you know th- that's what Joey Wright does. That Steve Carfino called him out and said that's the way he treats his players and the way he does it. But he does it because he keeps them accountable and challenges them to be able to stand up. Have a look at Conga now. Mm. Conga's looking like a different player. So you are going to find yourself in the dog books with uh, in the dog box with uh, Joey Wright sometimes, but it works. Well, don't just stop with Conga. Harry Froling's been great all season, but he's continuing to elevate. And even Jack McVay's hardly played. He came in and played a massive role. Had nine rebounds against Perth. Uh, I think he had four and contributed as well uh, against Sydney. So plenty of contributors across the board. The question is, can they now make the playoffs? Well, of course they can. I still think they're the least likely of the top five to be able to do it. But with how potent they are at the offensive end, they're a sort of team that when they get up and going, they're a tough team to be able to stop just because they can put so many points on the board. They're going to have to have some massive wins between now and the end of the season. They've played an extra game too than some of those top four teams. So there's not a lot of room for error for them, but um, obviously they're a chance. Well, none bigger game than coming out this week for them in the jungle. But for now, Adelaide 36ers, you are getting stroked.
As we move towards the finals, we want to address some questions and always come at us on social media. Let us know what you want to hear on the basketball show. Several people have asked. It's changed the season in the NBL, Shane. If there was ties in win-loss that used to be decided by the record between those two teams, this season it goes to percentages, which is very important for that top five. Yeah, well, it used to be so important because when you're playing against a team, you were counting every single point Mm. between those two teams. Now teams it's important that every single point is counted across the season so it doesn't matter who you are playing against and to give you an example the top team the Sydney Kings with 103 percent Melbourne at 102 Perth with 105 that would be due to the 40 point win they had against Illawarra early in the season Mm. Uh, Brisbane with 103 and the Adelaide 36 is 102 so they are one percent off top spot obviously wins still come into it and they're one game behind top spot but it's just so close and I actually like it this way I think we need to actually show it more on the ladder because it's such a relevant thing now between positions yeah and also you mentioned the big win Perth over Illawarra Brisbane come out and smack Cairns on the weekend and now that Cairns can't make the playoffs teams with games against Cairns potentially big wins make a big difference there as well oh definitely but I don't think anyone will be just thinking percentage against Cairns because they've upset some teams as well whether they can hold Hold on to that after getting slapped by the prison bullets is going to be important. Well, that is how it looks counting down towards the end of the season. Plenty of games coming out this week. It's time now for the Unibet game preview. So many NBL games. Let's jump into it. Starts off on a Wednesday night. Special game, open air at Melbourne Arena. Australian Open game, Melbourne hosting Illawarra. We like that, and we're going to be quick. Director Dave said be quick, so I'm going to go Melbourne, 11 plus. Great atmosphere too, that game. Great one there. New Zealand hosting Cairns after they play tonight as we are recording. Oh, New Zealand. New Zealand finally get a win. Not knowing the result tonight. No, let's go might... uh, New Zealand 1 to 10. They might have already got one tonight. Who yeah. knows? Uh, Brisbane hosting Sydney. Uh, I'm going to go Brisbane, 1-10. to 10. Brisbane are on fire, playing great basketball right now. They are my smoky to be able to win the championship. Said it about a month ago. Still think it could be uh, Brisbane, Melbourne, but... Uh, sorry, uh, Melbourne, Sydney, but Brisbane are playing well. Mm, Lamar Patterson just getting better and better, it seems. Kadee coming into some form as well. Uh, Perth hosting Adelaide. This is a flip of the coin, and I think you'll go the other way. I- I'm going to go with Perth. After they've got a win, I'm going to say 1-10. to 10 against the Adelaide 36ers with no confidence whatsoever. Oh, this is great. I'm going to go for Adelaide. Someone challenged me during the week about being biased against Adelaide, so I'm, I'm going to the 36ers. They are flying at the moment, crucial to their playoff run. So I might get two pokes next week. That'll be great. Uh, Illawarra hosting Cairns. I heard you like to be poked too. Oh, so come on now. I'm telling you, I might get to give you oh, two. Oh, you'll get to give when them. When Cairns okay. win tonight um, and Adelaide next Illawarra week. Illawarra host Cairns. Let's go uh, Illawarra 1-10. to 10. Close one, like it. Uh, New Zealand hosting Brisbane. Let's go Brisbane, 11 plus. I think they'll be too strong, the Brisbane Bullets. Oh, Brisbane getting wins away, I like it. Sydney hosting Perth, another massive one for that top four. Oh, another flip of the coin. I tell you, the variations between a win and a, lose, a loss in, uh, in this top four is unbelievable. But I'll go Sydney 1 to 10. Jesus, if you tipped Sydney to go 0-2, I would have been amazed. Uh, Adelaide hosting Melbourne. I'm going to go the Adelaide 36ers. I'm picking them to drop the one in Perth, come back home, and to be able to take on uh, Melbourne. They play well, and I'm going to tip them 1-10. to 10. That'll be a high-scoring, tight contest, I reckon. I like it. So you're just tipping the top teams to split the round. There's your NBL games that are a huge round of NBL. Moving into WNBL semi-final time, business end of the season, Canberra versus Perth and Melbourne versus Adelaide in three-game series. Let's who just who wins all, through? Let's just skip all of that. I'm picking Canberra right now to win the whole thing. They are so talented, I don't think they'll get beaten. So I think they'll knock off Perth. They're capable, but I don't think they'll get it done. And I think Melbourne, that game's gonna, that series is going to be a little bit closer, I reckon. But Melbourne, with the talent they've got, they should get over Adelaide. Hmm. I'm just going to throw it in there because you won't. If the only way Perth challenge Canberra is they get a little bit of an X factor and there's someone with the surname Heal who's just been getting a few more minutes and yeah. maybe she comes into play in the semis. But Canberra, very talented. Uh, moving into the NBA, Houston hosting Toronto, Saturday lunchtime, our time. Well, James Harden's been in unbelievable form, um, but I'm going to go Toronto. Um, 
great team. Well, really disciplined. I think they'll have the defence to be able to get it done. And uh, New Orleans... 1-10. to 10. Oh, Sorry, yes, margin important. New Orleans hosting San Antonio Sunday morning our time. Well, I think Davis is out for a couple of weeks, so they're certainly not going to be as competitive without him. He's had an unbelievable year, as expected. <laughs> Reasonable factor. Yeah, just a little one. Uh, and San Antonio are playing decent basketball as well. They're really capable. So I'm going to go with San Antonio 11-plus on the road. And finally, for our game preview this week, is Oklahoma City hosting Milwaukee Monday our time. I'm going to go Milwaukee. Um, Milwaukee's been just so solid. And again, a lot of, getting a lot from, you know, they've got the Greek freak who is a superstar, but there's so mm. many other people playing a role for them. Uh, I'll pick them to win that uh, on the road by 1-10. to 10. Intriguing stage of the NBA season. And there's all your expert opinions from Shane the Hammer Heel. That is this week's Unibet game preview. Time to address the hot issues in hoops. Hammers on the clock for the starting five. And first of all, I, I hope this is why this jersey's on because I called that game on the weekend a huge comeback by the Hawks versus the Breakers. And I was happy for the Hawks. They did well. The way to stay in the game, be down 15, and then come back and win by double figures. But I tell you, the New Zealand Breakers have been the biggest disappointment. I've got this on because I'm ready to play. You need me to be able to play. All right, Braswell's under more pressure than my jockstrap. That's a lot of pressure right now because there's a little bit of extra weight that's being carried around. So he needs to be able to fight. He's not getting the job done with all the talent they've got. Uh, they are not looking good, and that was a terrible loss. Checking the seams of that jersey. That jersey's under pressure. 34 <laughs> 11 final quarter, 23 points, biggest quarter differential of any game this season. Uh, moving into right here, are we going to see the back to back MVP, the beard? is absolutely tearing apart the NBA right now. Well, I want to go on record to say to start with, I actually hate watching him play. He's a freak, what he does. <laughs> but I hate the, the style like of the ball. way they play. It's just one man and four people standing around watching. But he has just joined Wilt. Wilt the Stilt, the legend. And 30-plus uh, games, 19 straight times. Unbelievable what he can do. The shots that he hits is just absolutely incredible. And I don't like it. Nice. I'm going to go on record to say there was a big bang earlier in the show and that was James Harden just trying to get involved as he fell down. Uh, thirdly, uh, another Australian NBA, Deng Adele comes in for two-way contract, first points in the association. Isn't it great seeing more Aussies break through? Well, that's what we're hoping for and we think it's going to be more and more Aussies obviously over the years just coming through. So much talent coming through the ranks and I love the two-way contracts. Hopefully Mitch Creek that's what I was hoping he was going to be able to land himself with one of those, playing so well, um, you know, in his league now, but probably running out a bit of time, unfortunately. Maybe this season, but like you say, more and more Harry Froling, other names in the mix. Uh, back on the NBL level, uh, Australia Day, nice initiative from the Illawarra Hawks to play Cairns in Canberra to celebrate Australia Day. Any fond memories of you playing in Canberra? Well, I actually went to the Institute in Canberra. It was back in the black and white days, a long, long time ago. But, um, yeah, great place, Canberra. I'm glad they're taking a game back. I do have a bad memory of playing for the Kings. We beat them in 96 in the first game. We must have won by 20 or 30 or something. Went back there in game two. They beat us by 20 or 30. Unbelievable turnaround. So I'll walk into that stadium on Saturday with not a whole lot of great memories. But um, I'm happy the NBL's back there for this one. There might be some Cannons fans there letting you know and WNBL might have the champions coming out of Canberra and speaking of champions in the WNBL final one we saw the last and it was fitting they played uh, against each other Susie Bakovic and Belinda Snell hung up their boots on the weekend well two absolute legends and the amount of young women that they will have inspired to be able to play basketball is incredible we can go through the list of achievements with championships and everything else but I think the main ones uh, they've both played at the Olympics numerous times Susie Bakovic all time leading scorer in the WNBL unbelievable uh, feat and uh, and Snelly 54 points the single highest Amount of points in any one game. Have you um, like dropped done. 54 before? No, no, not even close. You're trying to lead me in. Have you done it? Oh, yeah, a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, no, it looked like she was going there on the weekend. Five or seven in the triple on the weekend. Uh, very impressive players and more on the WNBL. Yeah, well, unbelievable thing. I mean, we've, we've um, hammered the WNBL a couple of times, and but we like to say how it is. And they did a great job with the whole lifeline 
um, raising funds and, and more than anything else, bring discussion uh, around the issues. And 14,600 they raised, the WNBL. Jenna O'Hay being able to share her story and, and, and really open up communication uh, for people that sort of need to be able to get communication and a bit of support like so many people do. And great to see just tragedy for Jenna's family turn into something great. So shout out to Jenna from Shane Lyon, everyone at the basketball show. Shout out to the O'Hay family. And that is the uh, starting five for this week. We're now looking at a star of the future. It's time for the Alcatel superstar. And the phone that they get as well. So Ethan Feliciano, in, uh, have a look at these highlights. He's a good kid too. I know he works hard on his game. Really good skills and footwork. Got a little step back going there as well. Don't worry about that. So I think he's going to uh, have a pretty good opportunity to do some good things in the future. Have a look at your pronunciation. Getting right around his name. A commentator's dream there, Ethan. You need to make it to the top level. Feliciano. Great for the announcer to throw out and uh, takes home a phone for his troubles. So Ethan, you are this week's Alcatel superstar, and if you think you're the next superstar, send in your vision and we'll get you an Alcatel phone. Thanks for joining us this week. That is all we've got time for. We're just seeing Cairns currently leading New Zealand as we film this. Could be a poke coming your way, sir. Yeah, very excited. Uh, We'll wait for that result after we finish filming. But thank you to our friends at Unibet and Alcatel, also the Daily Telegraph and all their sister publications at News Corps and our friends right here at throwbackstore.com.au. Shane, another big week in basketball coming up. I've got a massive week of travel this week and some huge games. I can't wait. And uh, as we said earlier, the ramifications of win versus loss are going to be huge this week. A lot happening in the NBL. A lot happening in Canberra as well. WNBL semi-final and then an NBL game in there for the first time in a while. So on behalf of myself, Nathan Strempel and Shane the Hammer Hill, enjoy your Australia Day and we'll see you next week.